Hello and welcome to DKPittsburghSports.com. You're watching Carter's Classroom. And today we are previewing the Steelers' upcoming matchup in the divisional round of the playoffs against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, as everyone remembers, the Jacksonville Jaguars beat the Steelers handily back in week five when they came to Heinz Field and won 30 to nine. Big part of that was because their defense got intercepted Ben Roethlisberger five times. They got two of those interceptions returned for touchdowns, and they pretty much did, did completely eliminated the Steelers' offense. But much of that was due to the Steelers not being, not being able to run the ball because they were behind in the second half. So we, people, we want to talk about why people want to, are, are saying the Steelers should, sh should set up the run with, with, with the pass. And it's not necessarily the pass itself, but it's also the formations they give. And the best way to run the ball on this Jaguars defense that's going to be very, very uh, aggressive. Remember, Jaguars love to use their four-man front. You're going to see Calais Campbell, Ngakwe, Malik Jackson, and you're going to see uh, Dante Fowler. And they will flip those guys all around, all around the, the end. They won't always stay in the same spots. But these four guys, you can always, always count as rushers. But what that does is it puts a huge emphasis on your linebackers over the middle. Sometimes that's Pozlozny, that's Telvin Smith. They, they, re they rely a lot on those guys. So the best way to negate that and help your ground game, spread them out. You want to see the, the Steelers make, force that nickel cornerback to come out here. He's going to be over the slot here. And that way, you're putting these guys in a situation where they have to sit back and read, is it pass or is it run? When you head, that gives you a chance to double team whoever you want. You can double team this guy, double team this guy. But somebody's going to get a chance to accelerate to that second level and get a linebacker. And that's what the Bills did really well last week when they, when they lost to the Jaguars in the wild card round. Now here you see the Jaguars lined up, and it's similar look like we were talking about. They have two linebackers over their four-man front. Their cornerbacks are running around making sure that they're in, in, in position in case of a pass. Look at how the Bills attack them. When they hand this ball off to LaShawn McCoy, look, look at this guy right here, number 50. That's Telvin Smith, arguably their best linebacker. He's really fast, but he has to hesitate here. Why? Because he's not sure if it's a run, a pass, an option. What's going on here? That allows this Bills tackle to come up, seal him, and it gives Shaney McCoy the chance for him to get down the field and get 12 yards on the play. This is how the Steelers can be really successful with Le'Veon Bell. Because of their threat in the passing game, the Jaguars have to honor Antonio Brown, Martavis Bryant, Juju Smith-Schuster, etc., or even Bell in the, uh, in the passing game. Those linebackers are often going to have to try and react to what's going on. When you're reacting, that means you're a step behind. Steelers have to do, do that and spread them out, force them to have to cover more space. Now, of course, the other aspect of this Jaguars defense is their pass defense. Yes, their front four is nasty. They have 43 of the Jaguars total 55 sacks, second to most in the NFL. But we're going to talk about their secondary, headed by their two Pro Bowl cornerbacks, A.J. Bouye and, of course, Jalen Ramsey. Now, both of these guys are, are, are often left in zero coverage, or they're, if, when they're given backup help by the safeties, they're going to they're gonna be more aggressive on those underneath routes. But the, uh, the Steelers should not be afraid to go to their receivers, and we're going to show you why with some of the footage in, in just a bit. But Jalen Ramsey is not, a, is not a handsy cornerback, which means he doesn't get physical with Antonio Brown and try to control him like an Xavier Rhodes or a Richard Sherman has in the past. He's going to try and run with Brown, and that's where he, he runs into a lot of trouble. He's, uh, especially if Brown gets to run those comeback patterns or those corners, he's going to get the chance to, to, to win those battles. But also, Martavis Bryant against A.J. Bouye, he's much faster than Bouye. And so when he gets off, he's going he's gonna to be running those deep posts. If Bouye does not have sec safety help, he's going to have to let Brown, run, run, Brown, uh, Bryant run his route. And when he gets, gets in those positions, that's where he's going to be. Ben Roethlisberger is going to find his passing window. And we'll show you just what we're talking about with this clip right here. So here you see the Steelers spreading them out. Look at uh, Antonio Brown at the top of your screen, Mark Davis Bryant at the bottom. Watch, you can watch both of their routes. That's the key to watch here. You see Br Brown, he's coming up at the top of your screen. He runs the comeback pattern, which means he runs up further, drives Ramsey further back into the secondary, then cuts back sharply, and he's running back towards Roethlisberger. That's a good route. That's what Roethlisberger sees, goes to, and gets the first down. But look on the other side of the field. Look at where uh, A.J. Bouye is running with Martavis Bryant. Look at that deep post pattern and how open Bryant is over the middle of the field. B Bouye is, is going to play basically cautiously because he does not want to give up the big play by letting Bryant get behind him. 
that's where the Steelers have to pick at. When they see the safety help isn't there and Bouye's being that protective, go to Bryant in those situations. And you also have Juju Smith-Schuster running around out there. There are going to be several opportunities to pick at this pass defense. The Steelers just have to take advantage of them throughout the game. Now flipping to the other side of the ball, we're going to talk about the Steelers' defense against the Jaguars' offense. Now, of course, the Steelers had the number one uh, unit in as far as sack production. They had one more sack than the Jaguars did all season, and they're coming in, for the most part, healthy. Yes, they're still missing Ryan Chazier, but Joe Hayden, Artie Burns, Stephon Tuitt, Cam Hayward, all these key players are healthy. And what the Jaguars are going to try to do, they're going to try and boost Bortles' confidence. We saw that a lot last week, and we'll get to the clip here, but they're going to boost his confidence by giving him the most easy throws to make. And one of the easiest throws to make for a quarterback is the screen pass. And they tried that a lot against the Bills. And what a screen does and how you stop it is you have to be aware of what the offensive line is doing and how everyone's reacting. And the key players are often going to be what are these guys right here in the, in, in, at the point of attack here. So say a screen, basically what happens is the running back right here is going gonna, is gonna to start looking like a blocker and then he's going to peel out into the flat trying to make it an easy option for the, for, for the, uh, for the quarterback. And what happens is the, often the center, the guard, and the tackle will all try to pull out and go set out space and take those guys out, out of the way. So that's what the, the, they try to do, and we'll show you how the Bills stopped it just last week. Now here you see Chris Ivory's the running back back there with Blake Bortles. The Jaguars are in shotgun. Ivory going to start by blocking. He's going to try and peel to his left and get open. But what shuts this down is because Kyle Williams and the defensive line of the Bills he's able to recognize the screen, so he never lets his man go. He sticks with the, the linemen of the Jaguars as they move to the left to basically, to basically set out the, the set for Ivory. This prevents Ivory from getting in position, and when Bortles throws the ball, it's basically a throwaway because Ivory's knocked off his pad. The linemen aren't set up. This is a busted screenplay. This is going to be reliant on the awareness and play recognition of Cam Hayward, Stephon Tewitt, and company up front. But fear not... These are players for the Steelers that have been very aware in the past. Stephon Tewitt intercepted Andy Dalton uh, last year on a, on a screen pass. These are guys that are going to be looking for this. And the Jaguars caught it several times against the Bills. The Steelers should be prepared for these moments. But, of course, the greatest threat of the Jaguars' offense is their ground game. With Leonard Fournette, who's a rookie, he tore up the Steelers for over, for over 100 yards in the last game, especially capped by that 90-yard touchdown run at the end of the game. We're going to get to that clip in, in a moment. But we want to remind our viewers that he only averaged three yards per carry, less than three yards per carry going into the fourth quarter. The Steelers were showing good gap integrity against the Jaguars the last time. That allowed them to be able to control the game and control the ground opponent. But where they slipped up was when they started to stop reading, read their keys. Now, one of those examples was when the Jaguars, they ran, a set, they, they ran basically a counter trap. What that allowed was they brought their guard. They pulled him to the weak side of the, of the formation, and the weak side, less players on it. Um, that allowed him to trap Vince Williams while these, while these linemen were picking up the rest, of the, uh, the rest of the Steelers. What needs to happen on this play is that either this defensive end or whoever's lined up in, near his gap needs to see that and follow him through it. Or the linebackers, they need to be following that guard as well, reading where the play is going because always the guard will take you to where the play is going. The Steelers didn't recognize that last time, and it hurt them just like it did in this clip. So here you see the Steelers are lined up. Notice, notice how, how the Steelers are lined up. The strong side is to the right side of the, of the formation for the Jaguars, so that's where the majority of the Steelers are. But as soon as the play snaps, you see that right guard. He pulls, comes out, and he's, he's going to come down to block Vince Williams. That opens up, that, that, may, that, may, that switches the amount of players they have, and now they have an advantage because Leonard Fournette is able to basically walk through the defensive front of the Steelers, and he's able to take off for the score. These are the moments the Steelers have to look for. They cannot fail to read their keys in these situations because when they do, that allows for Leonard Fournette to pick up those yards. But they've shown when they play the, their gaps, they make sure they're, they're watching their responsibilities and they're following the progress of the play, they can win these situations. Now, these are the keys to victory for the Pittsburgh Steelers. There are several matchups that favor them. Look for their offensive line to go against that Jaguars defensive line. It's going to be a vicious battle, an exciting one on Sunday at Heinz Field. That being said, our prediction here at Carter's Classroom is a 24-10 victory for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We see that their, their offense is going to have too many weapons, and Ben Roethlisberger having now thrown seven straight 
games with multiple touchdown passes. He's going to continue that trend against the Jaguars. He's much better than he was when he threw five interceptions many weeks ago, preventing the Jaguars' offense from being able to run the ball to control the game. Thank you for watching Carter's Classroom, but don't think you got out of your homework assignment because, yes, we do have your homework assignment. It deals with the Jaguars in their last time they played the Steelers in the playoffs. Mind you, the Jaguars are the only team in NFL history to beat the Steelers twice at Heinz Field in the same season. That's, that happened back in 2007 when they beat them late in the regular season and then again in the wild card round of the playoffs. Our question is... Who was the cornerback that intercepted Ben Roethlisberger twice in that playoff game, returning one of those for, it, for a touchdown? Thanks for watching Carter's Classroom. Post your answer to that question in the comments section below. We'll give you the answer before game time on Sunday. From Carter's Classroom, class dismissed.